A heated rivalry. We'll see the Chicago White Sox as they play against the Minnesota Twins. Major League Baseball coming up on 2K Sports. A look at Joe Mauer, one of the game's great hitters. Can they shut him down? Nighttime in Minnesota, we're at Target Field. Happy to be with you, our broadcast of 2K Sports Major League Baseball. And it's Nick Blackburn, he's their starter. And he gets going against these White Sox hitters. What do you think's in store? As a manager, and send Nick Blackburn out to the mound, you know you're going to get a competitor. He's going to give you an effort out there. He's a guy that really goes after hitters. His slider is his put away pitch. To be most effective, though, he has to get strike one. Presented by Pepsi, we'll show you the lineup Ozzie Guillen's got going. In our scouting report, John, who are we watching for today? If you want to see power in the lineup, just look at Carlos Quentin. This guy can hit it out of the ballpark and hit it out anywhere. Doesn't matter if he's pitched away, he'll take it to right. If he's pitched in, he'll hit it to left field. Great power stroke, but the thing he's been working on this year is his consistency. And so Johnny Damon leads it off. White Sox winning last night, so they grab game one of the three game set against Minnesota. Damon will foul that one away. Going back to that last outing, a big win, big offensive game. Uh, absolutely. Offense was the story in this game. And there's just no chance of containing these bats when they get hot. Picked up by Hardy. And so Damon retired. And we'll take a quick look at the Twins. How they'll be out there positionally on defense. But Steve, anybody stand out? But Denard Span has great athleticism in the outfield, and he really shows that he can run down balls in the gap. He has great range out there, and the ability to get the ball back in quickly, he's some kind of defender. One out, faces him. First pitch, and he misses the fastball, strike one. Oh, he just swung late on that one. That's what you call getting gassed up. The strike two pitch, and Blackburn gets it. Well, he just plain old fooled him right there. He must have been looking for something else. Hit his spot perfectly with that change. You're a out. swing and a miss. Oh, Alexei Ramirez is retired. But well, great job getting it 0-2. That third pitch, unhittable. Guess he figured why waste a pitch, save the arm. He did. Nice job. And here's Paul Canerco. Well, he had a contribution last night offensively as he drove in a couple of runs. Two outs and nobody on. The pitch swings at that fastball and misses 0 and 1. Here's the pitch lined hard down the left field line. That's going to one hop off the wall. And he'll stop at second base, and it will be a double. Well, with two outs, you get a big double right here. The last thing you want to do is get stranded. You got a little momentum. You got the pitcher on the ropes. Let's see if they can take advantage. And it's Carlos Quinton in the box now. Chases that first pitch. Starts off with a strike. Let two seam fastball down and away. It's awfully tough to center that ball and make solid contact. That time, he couldn't even make any contact. He deals, smashes that one towards the shortstop, and Hardy's able to get to that one. And so Nick Blackburn, he will head off, works his way out of the first inning without allowing anyone to score. Bottom half coming right up for the Twins. We're going to take a look now at the starting pitcher for the White Sox. Steve, he's facing the Minnesota lineup today. Tell us his thoughts. As a hitter, when you face Mark Burley, you have to be ready. Be ready to swing the bat. He's a guy that's very efficient in the zone. He throws strikes and he works quickly. Make him get the ball up. First pitch to Span. Hit on the ground, up the middle. One away. Pepsi presents our starting lineups. Here's a look at the Twins. 
So who are you looking at, John? Well, Denard Spann's the kind of guy that you can put out on the field and you don't have to worry about. He plays great defense. He's a good average hitter, high on base guy. Not going to hit a lot of home runs, but he's not going to beat you with the mistakes. He's a consummate team guy. And Delman Young in. His lifetime average, 356 against the White Sox. Back up the middle. Oh my! It ends up in the glove. I can't believe he caught that. He was just trying to get out of the way. Pitchers are taught once they release the ball, they become a fielder. He was in good position right there to be able to make the play and help himself. Pitch from Burley swung on and missed. Ball. And he leaves that one alone. Joe Maurer patience. That'll even the count. Trying to throw it in on the hitter's hands right here. Trying to get him to flinch and open up. He just laid off the pitch, didn't get the strike. Hot shot towards the hole. And the tag is applied, side retired. So Mike Burley gets him, one, two, three. He gets through the first inning without allowing a hit. And it'll be the White Sox. And if you were just tuning in, hi, Gary Thorne along with John Crutch, Steve Phillips. We bring you Major League Baseball on 2K Sports. And Beckham's in the box. He'll start it off here in the second. Fastball oh. bounces to the plate that time. The 1 0 pitch. Swing and a drive, deep left center. And it's going to be Young. As he gets to it for the end. Pitching staffs for the most K's for the month. Our State Farm leaderboard. Tigers number one. Second, the Mariners. Third, the Yankees. The Twins fourth. And at number five on the list, the Rays. You see the, the prodigious strikeout numbers for these teams. and They have power stuff. Really the whole depth of the team. They get a lot of swings and misses, and that's a manager's best friend. And Alex Rios up. And right now, top five and runs batted in in the league. And he steps on first. That's the second out. It's going to be Brzezinski. And the love affair just continues, does it not? His fans have got a special way of welcoming back to town. He swings on that 0-0 delivery, misses the fastball. Strike one. 423 career average off Nick Blackburn. Hit hard to second. Tolbert. And he throws on to first. That'll retire the side. Quick half inning there. It's over. Five pitches. No runs appearing on that scoreboard yet. And it's Michael Kadaya in the box now. He'll start the home half of the second. Michael Kadaya. Burley with a delivery. Starts him out with a fastball for a strike. Now that he's gotten the four seamer down and in, look for him to go outside now. Strike, strike two, Kadaya. Watch that strike zone now. The hitter's got to protect the outer part of the plate right here, down 0 2. Oh. And it holds at 0 2. Swing and a hot shot. Oh, avoided the path of that ball. That was right up the middle. Was that ever? 
And that'll bring up Jason Kubel. Still a bit of baseball left to be played in the season. Here's what the Central Division race is looking like, courtesy of State Farm. First place, the White Sox. Second place, the Royals. Third belongs to the Twins. Fourth place, the Indians. And rounding out the list, the Tigers. In the tough AL Central, we all thought the White Sox would finish down on the pack, but instead, they're sitting on top and making us all look silly. Bon Kanai is running. He is safe at second base. Ball. Good patience. Jason Kubel lets that one go by for a ball. It'll even up the count. Hitting 250 lifetime against Mike Burley. Ball. And Kubel will take it low for a ball. Now, big break on this curveball. He starts it in the strike zone, but it falls right out of the zone. Good eye by the hitter not to chase it. Ooh, he paints the corner with that one. Two and two now. Now the 2 2. Still 2 2. Lined right at the second baseman. What a way now. Rank-wise now, let's take a look at where the Minnesota Twins sit in the American League. Fourth in batting average, fifth best for hits, and they also show up in the top five and on-base percentage. That will go a long way to their ability to score runs. The more runners you get on, the more chances you have to score runs. And it's J.J. Hardy now. And the strike Burley catches him looking. Here's the delivery. That is a strike. Hardy now lean out over that plate to protect. The hitter saw fastball. The pitcher threw change up. Not a good combination for the hitter. There's a swing towards the hole. That's down. Runner could come home. He throws. So Minnesota continues their offense. Number 20. Over. Well, right there, he just got a pitch he can handle, and he delivers a big RBI it for the first run of the game here in the second inning. Tolbert at the plate. Now this offense, Steve, it's on the move, and now they're trying to carry this on in the ballgame. Okay, we just saw quality at bat right there. He got the job done. When he got his pitch, he knew what to do with it, and he delivered. Hit sharply towards the hole. That's a great situation for some offense. I tried to go down with that 0-1 pitch, but it gets blasted right back for the base hit. But the way he went after that in the box, Steve, it looked like he might have been guessing down there. Well, I'll tell you what, you have to make contact behind him at count. He got a pitch over the heart of the plate and took advantage of it. And they've taken a timeout here. They're going to go to the mound and have a little chat. Well, they're not quite sure if they're going to take him out just yet. You have to figure they're going to at least discuss how he feels and what they're going to do. Burley with a delivery. Back up the middle. With that, they'll hold the runners at first and second. What a great snag right there to get the out. Tremendous athletic play. Bundo at the plate. Two men on and two men out. That swung on and grounded up the middle. And that'll get him aboard there on a roll. And Hardy scores. Boy, this lineup, they are hot right now. The chances, they are productive. Well, you see the pitch down in the zone a little bit, but he got a good piece of wood on it and drives it. What you like about that at bat is the discipline to keep your head in. Well, I'll tell you what, he changed locations, went down in the zone. It's a solid piece of hit. Towards the middle. Good start offensively. We get the first two runs of the game coming here in the second. Minnesota with a lead, two to nothing. We'll be looking to the leadoff batter later on in this inning, another A.B. And there's the skipper, Ron Gardenhire. Third baseman. 
He got what he needed out of his lineup that last time through. This lead now something he can try to protect if he can get some solid pitching. And here's Martian. Hit up the middle. And it is in there. That's going to bring the tying run to the plate. And be sure to tune in next Sunday. It's going to be Pablo Sandoval and the San Francisco Giants as they take on the Cardinals in St. Louis. The action gets going at 2 o'clock Eastern. Looking forward to that one, Gary. That's going to be some kind of ball game to tune into. And Jim, tell me, what a year for him. Top five in homers. Runner on first base. Nobody out. The pitch. It's all in one as he swings and misses at that fastball. Well, one of the offensive leaders in the game this year, and obviously a guy who's getting the job done for this offense is somebody they've really come to rely upon. And it's starting to head out towards the wall. He's thinking extra bases. There's the throw. Tremendous situation now for the White Sox. Left fielder, number 18, Johnny Damon. He goes right with the pitch and slaps the ball in the left field. And if you try and pull that pitch, you're probably not even going to get the bat on it. That's a ground ball to second base if he pulls that one. Two men in scoring position, still no one out. First pitch on the way to Damon. The fastball is in there. It's 0 and 1. Now made good contact in the game last night with four hits and getting the good part of the bat to the ball. Strike two. The strike two pitch and Blackburn gets it. Well, that's just textbook pitching right there, exactly where you want to put the breaking ball. Either keep it down at the knees or even bounce it in the dirt if you have to to get the hitter to swing over top of it. That's what he did there. Great. Alexi, we got a second now to see the four seam fastball in K Camp. Now, that's a make or break moment in this game for Nick Blackburn. If he doesn't get himself out of this mess, he may not be around for long. And, uh, you know, his team struggling to hold on to that 2-1 lead. One man out. Go ahead is up the plate. He just wants to get it out right here. You get the second out of the inning. You still have the lead. You get out of the inning. Still ahead. And it's 0-2. Alexei Ramirez going to have to protect now. A lot of times movement will pull a hitter, but it looked like right here the velocity on that pitch was what caused him to swing and miss and be late. Got him there. That was a nice strikeout. K Cam registers this at 86 miles per hour. Some pretty good break. Fantastic piece of pitching to get that out, John. Well, that's the part of pitching you love. He's looking for a fastball. He's expecting a fastball, and then just drop one right off the table. What a pitch! And Paul Canerco to bat, well, leading the league in home runs. Here's the pitch. The strike two pitch and Blackburn gets it. This is the go to pitch for many pitchers in the major league. The fastball down and away. When in doubt, that's where you go. Kadir out. And he'll step on first to retire the side. They get two men in scoring position. Couple of hits. Can't get them home, though. White Sox still looking for a run. And the field brightly lit up under that night sky. First game of electricity way back in 1935. That was at Crosley Field. Leading it off, Delvin Young. Now Przinski sets up. Put something off, and it swung on and missed. 0 and 1. The key to a great changeup is deception and velocity change. He has both of those, and that's why it's so good. And it's 0-2 in the Camarilla cutter. Delman Young, he'll be swinging at anything close. And with that changeup, keeping hitters off balance, that's what it does. It does, and that change in velocity gets the hitter out in his front foot, makes it awfully tough to hit the changeup. So that brings up Joe Mauer. Teams who have done the best job number avoiding seven. outs. The State Farm Joe leaderboard on base percentage. Mauer. The White Sox number one. The Yankees second. The Red Sox third. Fourth the Orioles. And we've got the Twins who are number five. A great matchup right here. These two offenses really scrappy battlers at the plate. Falling off a pitcher's pitch. Doing anything they can to get on base. Pitchers are going to have to keep coming in the zone to try to get out. The second for one. And they turn the double play. 
And that one's going to be a candidate for play of the week, Steve. Well, you talk about shifting momentum. You get the ground ball double play, and all of a sudden, you're back in the dugout ready to hit. It's Kadire at the plate. Base is empty with two outs. Here's the first pitch. Nope, that one not in there. Burley misses. Now the 1 0 pitch. Kadaya swings, hits this one. This one's going to be fielded by Ramirez. And that one's put away to retire the side. So no runs on one hit and nobody left on. Minnesota 2, the White Sox nothing. None other than Ozzy. That's Ozzy Guillen. He knows he's going to have to get more innings like that last one and have some production to tie this one up. And it's Carlos Quinton in the box now. He's the league leader in hits. First pitch to Quinton. That's a foul ball. Oh! Here it comes. Hot shot towards the hole. That's going to bring Gordon Beckham up. Now breaking down Carlos Quentin's season so far. Let's see how he stacks up compared to everybody else. First in batting average. First in hits. And he's also first in on-base percentage. That knack of getting on base better than anybody else. He can spoil a pitcher's pitch, work the count. He knows the strike zone extremely well. No one out and a runner on first. The first pitch. Good pitch as he's late on that one. 0 and 1. Okay, they have four hits so far in this one into the fourth inning, but they haven't been able to put them together and, and try to mount any rally. And I think right now the pitcher's getting the job done, making the pitch when he needs to. Smash towards the middle, and that gets the tying run on board. Now and that's going to plate Alex, Alex Rios. 0-2 oh, count, so you protect a pitch that's up, so a little easier to do that. Absolutely, you can fight it off, punch it over the infielder's head, that time, solid piece of hitting. And uh, at the plate, one of the tops and runs scored, top five. This one's going to be fielded by Span. One away. And now, courtesy of State Farm, here's a chance to view the league's best RBI producers. Well, these are the guys that make the most money because they're the ones who impact the game in a big way, drive it in the critical runs that lead to a team's success. It's going to be Przinsky. He's in the top echelon of hits right now. Runners on first and second with one out. And the first pitch, a smash to first. One. And there's two, a double play. They pick up no runs on two hits and strand one. Twins still protecting a lead. Five, six, seven hitters to get things started. And Jason Kubel now to lead it up. An exciting hitter. Boy, he is some fun to watch. Jason Kubel. And he starts Kubel out. It's taken for a ball. Bottom dropping out on that burly pitch. Uh, definitely, Gary. You're absolutely right. I mean, this guy's got that kind of pure raw power that is so fun to watch. Good cut fastball in there. One and one. When you can hit your spot with that kind of movement down and into the hitter, you're way ahead of the game. A line drive towards the hole. And that'll set down Google. And a chance to check out the schedule for the White Sox. They wrap up the series with Minnesota tomorrow. They kick off a series with the Kansas City Royals, a little division play. That's a team they beat pretty soundly the last time around. That'll be a three-game series. Following that, they kick off a home series with Baltimore, a team they beat in the previous series between the two. And it's J.J. Hardy at the plate. He's batted 0 for 11 over his career off the White Sox. Burley with a delivery. Swung on and hit. It's going to be Quentin. That one's caught. 
number 20 Colbert at the plate. Had a base Colbert. hit his last time up. Here's the first pitch. Runs up to bunt, gets this one down. And it goes foul. And that's another foul ball. Swing and a foul straight back. Well, you're told with an 0-2 count to spread out your stance and to choke up on the bat so you can put the ball in play. Better control of the bat. And that's what he did right there, that 0-2 pitch, just barely getting enough of it to put it in foul territory so he can continue this at bat. Now swing and a shot toward second. Throws to first in time. That's three down. And they aren't able to make any noise here in this half inning. We played four full here in Minnesota. And the batter's box, it's Tian. Well, they went out of yesterday with a pitch that he could drive, and he took advantage of it and took it deep. First pitch on the way. Line shot into center field. That gets down. That'll put him on the tying run up. So, Jim Tomey coming up. Here's what the Twins have in store. One game left for the White Sox. That's tomorrow. Their homestand continues with another team, the Los Angeles Angels. That's a three-game series, and it's on the road to take on the Rangers and uh, one of the game's leading hitters, Josh Hamilton. That team trumped them in their last set of games. Great season, top ten in RBI. A runner on first, no outs. Tomei gets in. Here's the first delivery. This one's pretty well hit to deep left center. And it's going to be Young. And he gets over to take care of it. The center fielder has a good angle to run this one down. He calls off the left fielder. And it's Johnny Damon now. One of the best batting averages in the league. Pitch on the way. Here's a swing line drive down the left field line. And bye-bye, that's a two-run homer. This two-run homer ties the game up. Clutch piece of hitting. Really important for the Sox right there to tie this up. Now if Chicago can get a big hit, they've got a chance to take the lead. And Ramirez settles in. First pitch. Fast ball. Too low. 1-0. And Steve, at this juncture, this is exactly what they wanted. We're right back to square one and maybe with momentum going on their side. Line towards first. And that'll bring up Paul Canerco. Oh, Alexi Ramirez's season so far. Let's take a look at where he ranks compared to everybody else. First in doubles, third most in hits. Uh, he, you notice he's also ranked in the top five in batting average. A guy that puts it in play, finds holes, and finds a way to get himself on base. He's the league leader in ribbies. One out man on first. And he starts Canerco out. Fastball swung out and missed. 0 1. Well, he's having some kind of offensive season, Gary, really in the middle of everything this team's doing offensively. Here's one hit very well deep. Can't cut it off. It's going to roll to the wall. The throw. Ramirez around third, headed for the plate. He comes in to score, and they're going to get the lead. And the White Sox, they just keep rolling. It knocks in a run. Let's take a look at our Pepsi WPA chart. do you need to see now you have to question his confidence giving up three straight hits not much going right out there at this point Carlos Quinton batting now there's one down now yeah, Steve you get that feeling right now this offense is not going to be stopped they've got themselves a lead late 
Swung on, that is hit. And he gets it through. That's his second hit in the ballgame. And a brief moment to see who's atop the league batting-wise, brought to you by State Farm. Now we see some tremendous hitters on this list, guys who understand how to make good contact at the plate and get the good part of the bat on the ball on a consistent basis. Boy, what a time now to capitalize if they can. And Beckham's in the box. He's averaged 391 lifetime off the Twins. First pitch to him. Swing and a rocket toward short. Two retired here. And the runners hold at the corners. Let's take a chance now to take a look at where the White Sox sit today in the rankings in the American League. First in doubles, first in batting average, and they're also the number one team hitting with runners in scoring position. That batting average driving in runners, this lineup knows how to hit in the clutch. They're patient, they let the ball come to them, and then they deliver. And Alex Rios up. And for RBIs, he's one of the best in the league. This one swung on, hit down the line and right. This one's going to be fielded by Span. That'll do it as they put that one away. They come from behind to take the lead, a three-run inning. The White Sox leading now. They've got the momentum. Another chance for the leadoff hitter coming up in the inning. And Friday's batting. Designated hitter. Number 11, Jason. Burley with a delivery. Ball. Slider just misses one and all. Here's the one oh. Right. One oh pitch a slider in there. What a one. He has great bite on this slider, throwing it down and into the hitter. Gets away with one and he gets in for the strike. Taps this one foul to the right. You're and the cut fastball's in there. Strike three, one away. K Cam's going to give us a good look at the cutter. Number eight. Got him looking on a breaking ball. A pitch that moves like that is something that is very useful to a pitcher if he's throwing it with confidence. And you can see that what a weapon that is. Punto at the plate. Lifetime 289 off Mark Burley. And the first pitch. Strike first pitch is a change up for a called strike. Now he just plain old fooled him right there. He must have been looking for something else. Hit his spot perfectly with that change. On the ground to first. And he steps on first. That's the second up. And it's Denard Spam. He flew out his last time up. Two outs, bases empty. First pitch to Span. Strike one. And Burley gets it by, called strike, and the count will go to 0 and 1. Now, good life on this fastball as he just buries it down and away. Line towards second. That one's grabbed. Side retired. No hits, nobody left on, and a good defensive half inning. The White Sox still ahead. Bottom three, due up next. On camera, the shot of Ron Gardner. His club only separated by one run from tying this ball game. Got a plan to get back in, we'll see. It's going to be Przinski, and one of the top ten averages right now. Strike one, Roush got him to swing on one. Consistency, professionalism, he never seems to give up at it back, Gary. He's so locked in this year. And that's a strike. A.J. Pruszynski now behind on the count. Defensive stance at the plate. Let's see if he shows a little more discipline at the plate tonight. Struck out twice in that game yesterday. It just expanded the strike zone. He's got to get more focus. Rung him up. Strike three. Count that one as a K. And Mark Tian up in the top ten and hits. First one to tee in. Here's the pitch. A shot up the middle. And he gets it down. That's his third hit. Three for three. Now and a brief look at who's leading the league in home runs, courtesy of State Farm. Well, this is a list of hitters that strikes fear in the opposition pitching. They have to because they know with one swing of the bat, they can change the score of the game. And it's Jim Tomey at the plate. 
Just faced each other a couple of times 0 for 2 against John Raj. Runner at first with one down. Tomei gets in. Here's the first delivery. Swings at that first delivery. Curveball by him on one. Rush with a pitch. And it's a called strike to Tomei. I looked locked in last night the way he swung the bat. Good stroke, good contact. See if he can't get it going again today to add those two hits from yesterday. There's a swing, line drive, center field. That's two gone. Now batting for the Chicago White Sox. Runner on first now for Johnny Damon. He homered earlier in the ball game. Well, they find themselves ahead on this one, and obviously two big at bats from him so far in the game, driving it around with a base hit, and then the home run, driving the ball out of the ballpark. So getting his pitches and doing some damage. The right center into the alleyway. He'll likely get extra bases on this. All the way to the wall. Tian's on his way home, and he gets there all the way from first. Now Boy, the continuation the here of this offense is called big-time momentum. Alexi Ramirez. Now the pitcher left us one over the middle part of the plate, right where the hitter can make contact. Good piece of hitting. Boy, with the run scoring there, that's a pretty, pretty fat pitch in an RBI situation. Keep the rally going. But here's the first one. Lined up the middle, and he gets that one down. His second hit, two for four today. Tremendous situation now for the White Sox. As much as you want to blame the pitching, we're now talking about more than one pitcher giving up all of these hits. You right now you have to credit the offense. These guys are really swinging the bat. And here's Paul Canerco. Not an RBI double this last time. This one's grounded hard up the middle. It's through. The runner's going to come home. That tag, and he is out at third. So they pick up four hits in the inning and two runs across. White Sox up three. Leading it off, Delvin Young. One for two in the ballgame. First delivery to Young. Swung on, line softly behind second base. And Young's got himself a single. Anytime you get your first hitter up in the inning, big things could happen. It opens up a lot of holes in the defense, and it makes it a lot easier to hit for the guys behind you. And Joe Mauer to bat. Runner on first base, nobody out. And Mauer ready for the first pitch. And Burley gets it by, called strike, and the count will go to 0-1. A smash between short and third. And it is in there. That's going to bring the tying run to the plate. Boy, what a time now to capitalize if they can. You want your hitters to go with the pitch. Don't try to force things. The ball's away. He drives it away. Use the whole part of that plate and the whole part of that bat. He did. Kids, you want to learn how to hit? That's how you do it. Runners at first and second. Nobody out. He delivers. Smash towards the middle. And it's caught by Ramirez. That keeps those runners at first and second. And Kubel's in the box. Grounded out his last time through. Two outs and a man on first. First pitch on the way. Well hit towards the middle. Fielded by Ramirez. Throws on to first in time to retire the side. Only five pitches to get out of that inning. That'll rest your hand. The White Sox still ahead. Need of the lineup coming to the plate. First pitch to Quinton. Uh, and he can't catch up with that one. 0 oh, 1. Only one career at bat prior to this one. Looking for his first lifetime off John Rush. Swing and a ball drilled down the right field line. That one's into the corner. Goodbye, home run. Add one more to that lead. Fly ball out of here, four up.
White Sox lead expanded here. Gary, they just keep getting big hits. Empty bases, three outs to go here. Gordon Rush with a pitch. Slider swung on and missed. 0 oh and 1. This game is not a done deal yet, but boy, when you get those kind of hits this late in a ball game, you're on your way probably to a W. And now the manager's got to start thinking about, okay, my offense has gotten the job done. What's my bullpen going to do? Still 0 and 2. Swung on, hit down the left field line, into the corner. Out of here, goodbye home run. And one more to that lead. Solo, big fly ball up by five. Dunson is called up. He'll be pitching. He'll be relieving for the Twins now. Number 51. Now, Jerry, this offense has just been in control right here. Extending the lead, going to make it much more difficult to catch him later. Swung on by Rios, strike one. Steve, this lineup uh, combined with their pitching right now in a position to be unstoppable. Well, no question about it. In the other dugout, the manager's got to be thinking, what am I going to do with this pitcher? Should I get him out of there? He swings down, and really hit that. And it's going to be young. No problem for him as he gets that out. It's going to be Brzezinski. Base is empty with one away. Here's the first pitch. First pitch, and he misses the fastball. Strike one. Well, I tell you what, for a two-seam fastball, he had some good movement and good pop on that one. Batter swung late. And he's out in front on that pitch, so he's in the hole now, 0-2. Swung on, liner to right. And that'll put Perzinski on first. That brings up Martian. That's a really good pitch, Steve, on an 0-2 offering to keep that down and in. That's a perfect pitcher's pitch. At this point, you've got to tip your hat to the batter. That's a solid job. First one to Tian. Here's the pitch. Takes a swing at that fastball. Can't connect 0-1. Here's the pitch. And that's a strike. Martinez going to have to take very close approach on the next one. Mauer is setting up. You're out. And Tian swings and misses strike three. Struck him out on three pitches. That gets it done in a hurry. Well, efficient and in control. When you have those two things working for you, you're going to get it done. And Jim Tomey lined out last time up. A runner on first with two outs. Tomei gets in. Here's the first delivery. It's strike one. Can't make contact on the fastball. Hitting 311. Lifetime off Minnesota. Oh, and that's a strike. Tomei's going to have to hit with a little less of a cut here. Well, you have to be ready for something hard, and this guy wasn't anticipating it. That's why he was late on that two seam fastball. End of this inning with a nice piece of pitching work as he gets the K. So they get the long ball working as they have two solo homers in this half of the inning. White Sox, they've got a commanding five run lead. Here's J.J. Hardy leading it off. Drove in a run earlier in the game. Hardy settles in, first pitch. Strike one! And Burley gets it by, called strike, and the count will go to 0 and 1. Look, Gary, with this big a lead here in the seventh inning, it's incumbent upon the pitcher to throw. Strikes. Get out right now. That is a strike. Hardy now lean out over that plate to protect. Well, a change up right there hit a good spot. You want to keep that down in the zone. Swung on and a ground at a first. And out number one as he steps on the base. Tolbert at the plate. He bounced down his last time. First pitch on the way. Up the middle. Beckham. In time for the up to the plate for the Minnesota Twins. Designated hitter. And Friday's batting with a called third strike in his last time up. And Burley gets.
gets it by called strike and the count will go to 0 and 1. Well it's getting late right now two outs here in the seventh inning and you know they're down by a bunch of runs they need to start to get something going right here Gary. Good cut fastball that time he's in control with the count at 0 and 2. Well the hitters dug himself a pretty deep hole right here let's see if he can battle himself out of it. Oh! Foul straight back. He deals. Cutter strike three call. That'll do it in the inning. And a good defensive half inning. Three up, three down. White Sox seven. Twins two. Taking account of the ball game, there's Ozzie Guillen. Last inning, that pitching gave up nothing. That's what he wants to see. Now looking for the offense to try and expand the lead. First pitch on the way to Damon. Swings at that fastball and misses. 0 and 1. Well, that pitch right there, he just blew it right by the hitter. Swung late. Hit sharply towards the hole. One away. Let's take a peek at the league leaders and hits brought to you by State Farm. Alexi Ramirez. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. Had a couple of hits, four trips to the plate. One out, nobody on. First pitch. Strike Swings one. and misses. The good change right there. 0 and 1. Well, he clearly fooled him right there. He had him thinking fastball and he pulled the string on it. Got him to swing Strike right two. through it. And it's 0 and 2. Alexei Ramirez going to have to protect now. Now, Gary, the pitcher pulled the string on this one. It looks like a fastball, and then it just dies out as it gets to the plate. Good late movement. He got him there. That was a nice strikeout. And he only got to see three pitches. Now, unhittable pitches, but he saw them nonetheless. Boy, that's a tough at bat for the hitter. He's got to walk away almost before he even got there. Here's the pitch. Third ball swung on and missed. Now it's 0-1. Couple of hits, 10 lifetime tries against Brian Dunson. Strike two, no balls and two strikes. Conurco now will look to tighten up that zone. Well, how about a chance to get through an inning without any base runners and without any runs? I mean, they've been blowing out in this one so far. Put a, put a zero, <clears throat> put a zero up there, and let's see if the offense can get it done. And Paul Conurco strikes out, could not make contact. And a quick inning for Brian Dunson. And it's the Twins, bottom half of the eighth. Punto at the plate. He's going to lead off the home half of the eighth. Number eight, Nick Punto. First pitch, here it comes. That fastball gets by him on the first pitch, 0-1. Well, it's getting late right now. They're down a bunch, so they need a big inning here. They can't wait till the ninth to try to come all the way back. They need to try to do something now. Really bad pitch right there to ball. The one two from Burley. Fouled off. Strike three called on the fastball. What a way. Good right pitch right there. Two Number strike two. fastball inside at the knees, hitting his spots with exceptional velocity. Nobody on base, one away. He delivers. Lays off a called strike of the knees, 0 and 1. Look, Gary, with one out right here, they still have time in this inning to try to generate some runs. They need to score here in this eighth inning and not leave it all to the ninth. Hot shot towards the hole. So Span is set down. Here's a look at teams getting it done on our league leaderboard. The staffs that have the lowest ERA. Number one, the White Sox. Second, the Yankees. Third spot, the Red Sox. Fourth, the Mariners. And at number five, it's the Angels. Well, this whole staff seems to be in shutdown mode. And it doesn't matter if it's the starter, the reliever, or the closer. These guys are... Swung on, grounded towards the hole. Now with two downs, they've got a man on board. Well, he's seven. having himself a day right here in this one. Two out hit right there. That's his third hit of the game so far. 
is Joe Maurer now, two down. Trying again here, just one for three thus far. And Maurer ready for the first pitch. And Burley gets it by, called strike, and the count will go to 0 and 1. Uh, Gary, I think right now that uh, that swung on, hit on the ground. Tian, he'll throw on to first, and that'll do it for this half inning. And heading to the dugout, Mark Burley, pitching deep in. Leading it off, Carlos Quentin. Right fielder, number 20, Carlos Quentin. First pitch to Quentin. Swings and misses at the fastball, 0 and 1. Well, a lot of times movement will fool a hitter, but it looked like right here the velocity on that pitch was what caused him to swing and miss and be late. Can't catch up with that swing and a miss, and it's now 0 and 2. Here it comes. Big swing and a miss on a heater. Strike him out one down. Here he threw a two seamer. Here's K King. Two straight fastballs. He still couldn't catch up with it. Well, the pitcher comes back with a fastball right after he threw one and gets the K. You know he's throwing gas out there. Base is empty. One out. Here's the first pitch. Watches a changeup go by for strike one. But Gary, awfully tough to read this pitch out of his hand. He has great deception, makes it look like a fastball. It just comes out so much slower. Swings and grounds this one to the right side. Foul. Yeah. And that one swung out and missed by Gordon Becker. But oh, just a great sequence of pitches right there. It only took him three. Boy, that's about as fine a job on the mound as you can get. So Alex Rios, he'll try and keep it going. 250 average lifetime. That's one for four against Brian Dunson. That's hit foul by Rios. That's a strike, and it's 0-2. Time for Rios now to protect. Well, if you're going to get a good fastball, you better pull the trigger a little sooner. You can't be late on that heater. Not a lot of action in this half inning. Nothing on. White Sox summit. Twins two. Here's a quick glimpse of Ron Gardenhier. Trying to feel what he's thinking right now. It's a very tough game. Uh, maybe, maybe thinking about some adjustments as we move forward. First pitch to Kadir. And the strike Burley catches him looking. Well, a non safe situation right here in the ninth inning. And they just want to get outs right now. Try to get the first out of the inning. Take away hope as the other team needs to score a bunch of runs. You get an out, you can really deflate them. And that'll bring up Jason Kubel. Well, that's the start they wanted right there. You get the first guy on with the inning. No outs. Big things could happen now. The pitch. Right and then he watches a cut fastball to start the at bat for strike one. And you can hit your spot with that kind of movement. Hit hard to second. And it's plucked off the field. And they get two. Great double play. Here's a look. 4-6-3 on the double play. Now that's the way they teach you whether you're at second base or shortstop. One fluid motion, get it out of the glove and get rid of it. And it's JJ Hardy now. Drove in a run earlier in the game. Ace is empty and two down. Here's the pitch. Swing and a hot shot. Whoa, get out of the way of that one. Straight back up the middle. I mean, now with two down, the he's got a man on board. Second well, the bottom line is that he's on base. But I tell you what, he's going to struggle mightily if he continues to swing at that pitch down in the zone, almost in the dirt. Two outs and a man on first. And here's the first one. There's a swing in contact. This one to Damon. And it's in there. He's got himself a base hit. Great opportunity for Minnesota. 
Well, as a pitcher, all you can do is throw it where you think he can hit it, and that's what this pitcher did. He made a great pitch. He executed it perfectly. Just give the hitter the credit. He beat him on this one. Two down. Runners at first and second. And Burley gets it by. Called strike, and the count will go to 0-1. Unless you stay back and really think about going the other way, you've got no chance of hitting that four-seamer down the way. Keeps it down that time, 0-2. Fans are on their feet right now. They know two strikes on the hitter. They need to keep this thing going. Swung on, hit on the ground. And that'll do it, everybody. That's out number three, this ball game over. A tough loss here for this crowd today, but boy, do they see some, some kind of pitching performance from the visiting team. And it's our pleasure to present you with the Pepsi Clutch Performer. Our fantastic display by Mark Burley got it done today. Well, yeah, I agree. Complete games seem to be a dying art, but every now and again, someone tosses a gem like this one. What I like is that even though he wasn't perfect, his manager gave him the chance and showed enough confidence in him that he could get the job done and finish it off, and he did. And you don't often get the bats going on the road quite like this. Pretty good offensive attack. Well, when you're on the road, to have this kind of offense, it takes the hometown crowd out of the game and really helps your chances. Well, that time again, thanks for being with us today, Major League Baseball. For Steve Phillips, Sean Crock, and the rest of our great 2K sports crew, I'm Gary Thorne. Thanks, everybody.